turning 30 soon and I want to be a good person. Some women spend their 20s starting a family. Some women spend them on ketamine. Both are valid choices. I'm having one of my spontaneous dinner parties. Can I help you? Brian. Who's Brian, Maggie? We have been chatting on Tinder for how long is it been? An hour. What about you? What have you been up to? Nothing. I've done some awful things, but I've changed. Oh my God, you shagged Jonah. What? Oh, Eddie. Why did you do that? You need monitoring. <laughs> you shagged Jonah. I, I need these women <laughs> in my life, Steph. Nicola Goblin and Lydia West star as Maggie and Eddie in the series, and they're joining us this morning with all of the tea. Ladies, good morning, and welcome to New York Living. <laughs> good morning. Hey, that was fantastic. Uh, real quick, if you could describe your characters in three words, what would those three words each be? Ooh, Ooh okay, loving, mm -hmm. uh, angry, <laughs> and cool. Yeah, okay. I think they're, they're both cool girls. I'm gonna steal cool as well. Cool, chaotic, <laughs> and oh, deep. Oh, you know what? I feel like I'm, I'm cool, like, chaotic, and deep. I like that. I like all Can't of those relate. things. Oh, good. I like all of them. So please describe for us now <clears throat> the friendship between the two of them because, wow, I love yeah. what I've seen so far. It's real, real. It's real, real. <laughs> it's, you know, it's really interesting. I think Camilla, who created the show, she really wanted to, you know, place female <laughs> friendship in the forefront. And it's, you know, it's a show. It's really funny because it's not something we set out to do, but everyone who's seen it so far in the UK has been like, oh, it's it's the new millennial show. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh gosh, yeah, I guess that's lovely. Like Yay. we, but we, we didn't set out to make that, but I think it's interesting because being in your thirties nowadays can mean so many different things. Mm -hmm. It can mean, you know, that you want to be married and have a quote unquote proper job, or it can mean, mm -hmm. we have like a friend, actually Luke Featherston, who's in the show, <laughs> who still goes to all my raves in his thirties. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, it can mean lots of different things. And there's no wrong or right way to do it. I Thank love you that. for that. I, I appreciate that because I'm I'm a woman in her 30s, yeah. and I feel like some of my mm -hmm. friends and I are on completely different sure. trajectories, and it's fine, and it's beautiful, yeah. and we're all right. Do your uh, the 30s were a long time ago. <laughs> I felt comport myself like I'm 12. Nicola, <laughs> you've known the show the show writer Camila Whitehill for some mm -hmm. time. How did you two meet, and what was it like to get to work together on this project? So yeah, we met at drama school in Oxford oh, in 2008. Oh. And she was training to be an actor and she was just really funny. We did a lot of like improv comedy weirdly at drama school and she was just so funny and sharp and I immediately like fell in love with her. And then she, we finished drama school. She was like, I'm not acting anymore. It's too hard and annoying. I'm going to be a writer. And I was like, sure. And then her first short play that she wrote was so incredible. It was about an, like an atheist choir. And it was like just so silly and fun. And I was like, oh, she's going to be a famous writer. So I always wanted to work with her. And then I didn't have a choice whether to be in the show or not. It could have been terrible. And I would have signed up for it. Oh. I was trying to tell my agent. I was like, I'm going to do Camilla's show. She was like, who's making it? I was like, oh, no one. <laughs> what channel is it going to be on? No channel. But thankfully, the script came in. It's incredible. So it all worked out for the best. This now, that's nice. a good loyal friend right there. That's right. And look at these two stars <laughs> coming out of Oxford. Unbelievable. Uh, please, we, we didn't miss that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but real talk for a second. It's very important, the discussion that you guys have as well, the series addresses bipolar disorder and yeah. depression. So tell us more about that and kind of exploring that in this project. Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny because it's, it's a comedy and I think in the first episode you think that like Maggie and Eddie are two like wacky girls having fun and then you realize in, like in the ending scene of episode one you go oh gosh okay this is something mm -hmm. quite dark and then by the time you get to the sixth episode it's devastating it's like a devastating drama with some funny moments um it's it, it's interesting because some people would say like why how would you why is dealing with bipolar disorder like how how is a comedy well suited to that but strangely, it really is. And I think Camilla is such a fantastic writer and does it with such care and depth mm. that, you know, it's also, it, it, and it really, it, it's interesting because I think if, if anyone's known anyone or even for themselves who've gone through like depressive episodes or, you know, in Maggie's case, depressive and manic episodes, mm. it doesn't mean they're not a person. It doesn't get rid of their personality. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. that's what the show does really well. Like Maggie's still funny and sharp on herself in the midst of all this turmoil. Mm -hmm. It's true, that's Nor life. Normalize uh, mental health and mental awareness and the mental struggles 
that so many people walk through. And don't they say that laughter is the best medicine? Uh, uh, hello, they're proof positive, these two. So you, <laughs> you've both conquered your 20s. I'm assuming you conquered it. Maybe yes. you maybe you sauntered well, in you were conquered. conquered. I don't think it as far as Conquered. Survived. Whimpered through. Right, right, right. Came crawling out the finish line. Lord through. What, what piece of advice would you give someone just entering the new phase of the 30s, which feels like forever ago, but the 30s, kicked my little tushy <laughs> so what piece of advice I mean, you look like a tiny a tiny young baby so don't oh, doesn't she i no. tell her that every day <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much what advice yeah, would I'm you just give early yeah. my, i just turned 30 and oh. i would the advice i'd give myself would be i'm a lot more relaxed than i was at 20 like life is kind of you can't control it and mm. i think letting go of control is the best thing well that's been my best kind of thing that I've learned in the, in the previous years, just to kind of go with the flow. And and yeah, life kind of sometimes swings you about, but if you kind of relinquish control, mm -hmm. you'll be much happier or more at peace, so. Yeah, I think that's very true and very good. And then I think also like there's not, there's certain milestones that we're expected to hit mm. and it doesn't matter when you hit them or even if you don't hit them, mm -hmm. I think, you know, going into a new decade it's very confronting and you feel like should i be doing this 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 and i think this show does it brilliantly and you you showed it in the clip there where you know eddie says some women spend their 20s on ketamine some women spend it starting a family both are valid choices that's right and that's an extreme but it's true like you <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't think you you should feel like whoever you are at whatever age it's who you're meant to be at that time so don't feel any regret or stress about it it is what it is here here well, thank you both yeah. for this therapy session the, we, uh, the co the co the mail. mail. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Ladies, thank you. Seriously, so excited for this.